Good evening and welcome to the work session meeting for July 9th, 2024. If we could all rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Kopstein, could you lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And if you could remain standing for a moment of silence as we uh, pray for the safety of all of our military and first responders and uh, keep in our minds and thoughts all of those that have sacrificed for our country. Thank you. <coughs> all right, we, will, uh, we are supposed to start with a discussion from the Water Department. I do not great do discussion. Do not see <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Um, might have been nice. <laughs> I feel like I'm at home. <laughs> so, uh, there will be do they will be do doing some uh, overnight system updates in the uh, Pine Brook Road area. There may be some uh, some loss of service uh, during that time, but uh, they're trying to uh, update the system and get some things uh, going right. We also have an, a couple projects that will be going on, and we'll bring water in uh, for those, especially some new water loops. Uh, I'm assuming Dan is downstairs. I haven't seen him come up yet. Mm -mm. Don't worry, he's usually listening, Jim, but... But you know what we'll do is we'll go into our appointments real quick. Uh, for on our resolutions, we have um, the appointment of Anthony Galvo to Parks and Recreation. Uh, we have an appointment of Michael Beeks to the Climate Smart Community Task Force. We have the appointment of John Meisterick to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Actually, John's already part of the Zoning Board of Appeals. This is a, uh, a promotion to the chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals, as he will be taking over for Gordon Fine, and that comes with a doubling of your current salary. Congratulations, <laughs> John. <laughs> and uh, we uh, one that did not make it on, I think it was... Uh, free, so car too, free, free car, <laughs> as long as it fits the keys that you already have. Um, and we have the appointment of uh, Anthony Altamari to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, taking, uh, as John moves up, taking his place there. Um, may I have a motion? Uh, motion. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, appointment of David McConnell to the Tree Committee. Thank you. I stopped with, the, uh, with that. Um, well, we'll keep going through all of the uh, personnel. Accept the retirement of Paul Calaruso from the Building Maintenance Department. Uh, thank you very much for your service, Paul. Uh, we, we will definitely miss you, guys, miss you there and I'm sure the guys will as well, uh, except the retirement of Sergeant Craig Scatola from the police department. Uh, once again, another, uh, another great person. Uh, Craig was in charge of our safety and uh, the CERT team, so I'm sure we'll be appointing a new safety officer, and uh, we wish you luck, Craig. And uh, we are also going to have, uh, we're going to appoint Keith Cutriff to the position of lead maintenance mechanic repair job class code 0477-02 within the police department, civilian. Um, Keith has been with us for quite a long time, uh, a much, much uh, deserved well prom deserved. Yes, promotion, very well deserved. And, uh, you know, thank you, Keith, for the job you do. And uh, when, you talk to, when you talk to the chief, you know how, how important he is for the things they've gotten done there. So. I, I gotta if tell you, even uh, uh, just just from uh, for Craig Sergeant Scatola, what a great guy! Yep. You know, just uh, always around, always there, always smiling, always hopeful. He will be missed. He will. He will. We have a great force. Yep. All right. Uh, can I have a motion on those? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, do we want? Uh, does anyone want to come up? Anthony, uh, Mike. John, anyone want to come up and say anything? <laughs> you don't have to if you don't want to. Come on up, come on up. You can give a quick introduction. Yeah, let's just, just introduce yourself real briefly. See yes. what we got. Yep, yes. right to the microphone. All right. Um, my name's Anthony Altamari. I'm here with my wife, Tony Ann. 
where 20 plus year residents here in the town of Yorktown, um, four kids, been through the whole system from YCNS to uh, uh, French Hill, Brookside, Strang, you name it. Um, Beautiful daughters. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm a licensed master plumber in uh, New York City, Westchester County, and Connecticut. I serve on uh, various boards, code committees in New York City and throughout. And I'm excited for the opportunity to serve the town. Um, my kids all played sports throughout town. I was the uh, girls lacrosse commissioner. I coached boys lacrosse, uh, coached football, uh, coached lacrosse. I think <laughs> Mr. Murphy knows that. <laughs> now you have some free time, huh? Yeah, now I have some free time <laughs> on my hands. So um, nothing better to do than to volunteer. Hard, hard to get that out of your system with the kids, too. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So sometimes we go and we watch, but yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, – I, I'm not yelling now, though. So, <laughs> well, welcome aboard. Stuff. I think you're where you belong. So, uh, we Thank appreciate you, you volunteering. Thank and you, Anthony. I do enough yelling. Okay, <laughs> good. So we're, it's fair. I just can't <laughs> wait till the salary doubles, and then I'm. <laughs> yes. There you go. Co a couple of years, we'll get you there. And uh, thank you. For, thank, thank you for stepping up. We appreciate up. It, Anthony. Thank you. And nice to see you again, Tony. Good evening. Uh, it seems like I have a lot in common with Mr. Altamari. I'm also a 20-year resident of Yorktown Heights. I also raised four children in this community, and we took full advantage of all of the recreation and parks uh, resources and opportunities. Uh, as I told the board when I met with them, uh, my two sons in particular, who are now Division Three baseball athletes, they derived enormous benefit from the time they spent playing um, since t-ball travel uh, and travel baseball rec baseball basketball soccer golf and um, please don't hold it against me that they never played lacrosse <laughs> <It's okay>. um, <laughs> but uh, the resources that the town offers in that area are so important to the kids and to the families that want to come to this community and raise their kids because it takes them out there interacting with their peers and coaches and and adults and it takes them away from the computer screens and the video games and the social media that is such a scourge for parents today so um, I'm retired after 30 years of working for the New York State Unified Court System so I have the time and I certainly have the inclination and I hope that I can be of assistance and help to the Commission and I look forward to working with uh, the chair Mr. Talbert and the uh, supervisor Mr. Martirano and I appreciate the appointment <coughs> very much Thank you. All right, welcome, welcome aboard. Board. Yep. Thank you, you. We appreciate everything. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Michael Beeks. Uh, yes, it, it would be an honor to work for the uh, Karma Smart Community Task Force. I, throughout my career, I always found ways to volunteer uh, uh, through uh, mostly through technology and, and robotics programs with various schools, and uh, and then since retirement. Thanks to Sarah uh, working <laughs> at the repair cafes, uh, and now to do something directly with the town. You know, I've been I've been an attendee on and off yes. a lot of town board meetings. We appreciate uh, it's, it. It's it's nice to be a part of that, and 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 especially something about the the climate smart community is that there's so much we can do on a personal level, all the way through family and community level, and uh, and maybe we could even strive something for something big like reviving the old putt train line. <laughs> you know, I had someone who wanted to do that and actually run it all the way down to the city, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a stretch. <laughs> it's a it's big a stretch. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> but still, yes. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Thank you. Michael. Thank you for volunteering, by the way. Appreciate it. And also, Much thank you for your service. It. All right, John. Hey, John. You're up. <laughs> right. So I'll start by uh, thanking you for doing this at a work session. When I was first appointed, it was the night of uh, <laughs> the public hearing for the comprehensive plan or something. And it, <laughs> I was here for at least four hours, and I think I just left. <laughs> only? Yeah. Only four? They didn't even get to the appointments just, anyway. Just be happy we have you going before yeah. Dan, because it might have been another four hours. Okay, well, <laughs> I've been known yeah. to go on, too. But anyway, so th thanks, everyone. I appreciate the, uh, you know, the appointment. And um, my only goals are to maintain what we do in the zoning board and most people probably don't hear much about the zoning board which is a good which is good because that means we're 
probably doing doing our job well. And uh, I'll echo what everyone else said. This is just a fantastic hometown, a great community. Uh, my <coughs> wife and family, this is our town. We've raised our children, and if I can contribute in one small way to that, I, that's why I'm here. That's why anyone on any of these boards do this. And I would encourage anyone that wants to step up, you, you may enjoy yourself, you may have fun, you may uh, do, do things that you know, you'll get some satisfaction out of, like, like I think most of the people that have served on boards would, would feel. So thank you. That's thank you. John. John, how many years have you served on the, uh, yeah. on the board? Uh, well, you know, the, the funny thing is I think the only time anyone ever leaves is if they move out of town. So uh, <laughs> I think I've been there since 2013, so it's a 10 plus years. And uh, like <laughs> I don't like, know. I don't know. <laughs> A five-year appointment, like let's. You didn't. You didn't realize it was ten and a half to life. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> five-year appointment. It's one of those places maybe, where they right. never leave. I don't even. Yeah, right. Exactly. Oh, right. well, we anyway. appreciate what you've done, and I, I like to looking watch you because of your work. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to your leadership, John. Right, totally. Thank you. Thanks, John. So, so I would like to take a second to, you know, just point out something. Um, I personally don't go on social media and look at all that stuff. Every so often, something will come up on a phone. But there have been some really uh, divisive comments made on social media regarding boards, regarding town board. Um, you know, I, I, it's sort of a carry-on from, from last week when I spoke uh, after courtesy of the floor, you know, about the key word being courtesy. Uh, there, are, there are many, many people who volunteer for the, in this town and many people who serve the town that, that get paid for doing so as well. Uh, I think there's a commonality of a love of Yorktown and a love of being there. And um, some, of, some of the comments that are made, you know, by the keyboard warriors who, you know, are, are slinging from behind a screen, uh, I, would, I would encourage you to think before you type. If you have a question, uh, my door is always open. Uh, last week, Ken, uh, Ken Belfour, actually this week, Ken Belfour had two minutes and 29 seconds of my time, mm -hmm. uh, which was about 25 minutes, right? Uh, but, you know, some, some really, really, you know, my door's there, and I will stop what I'm doing if, if I can, if I'm not in a meeting, and we'll have the conversation, as will any of our department heads and any of the people that are there. And I really encourage you to do that before you want to cast cast stones without knowing what your target is or really caring about it. I will also uh, say that uh, from the people reading the stuff, if you read it and you have a question, uh, I have been known personally to be too honest, to be too uh, direct when I answer a question, but that's fine. That's, that's who I am. I'm not a political person. I don't really like to mold something. I like to speak my mind. And uh, if you do have questions, you do have things, please pick up a phone, come by town hall, shoot an email. Every one of us are accessible. Uh, and our boards are accessible as well. And uh, I would highly recommend that rather than the, the trash that goes out on, online. I, I just think it's really inappropriate, especially when you see people who volunteer for the town uh, being attacked. It's just not not the proper way to to accomplish anything. Uh, so I, I would I would like to uh, not like I would love to see civility come back to uh, come back to the dealings of the town uh, and and really make sure that that's um, a priority. You know that we, we we think about we think about each other uh, when when we're looking at things like that. All right, so with that, Dan, welcome. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Hey, Dan. So, Dan, I, I know I asked you to come in. I wanted to try to see where we were on an update with the uh, uh, pump stations and then also talk a little bit about our uh, discussion with the Hallux Mills sewer and what we're what we're trying to achieve so okay 
take it away. Well, uh, the pump stations, um, a few months ago, we got a draft report. We sat down with our consultants. We had a couple of comments. So um, actually last week, I just got a new revised uh, draft report. So we're going through it, looking at all the design assumptions. Um, so that thing's on track. Uh, I would say probably at some point uh, uh, early next year, we'd be putting that out to bid. And uh, now this, this would involve, we, we're sort of, we have two separate tracks going. So th this ties into um, what we're trying to do um, uh, with the Hallux Mill uh, area, the, the collection system associated with it. So uh, on this round, we're doing the uh, Crystal Lake pump station, which is over by um, Grand Springs Road. We're doing the Saddle Ridge pump station, which nobody can see. It's like back in the woods on a trail. Um, it's by Terrence's house, so you know where it is. <laughs> um, we're doing another one. Um, we're doing the uh, Mohansic pump station, which you can see from 202. And finally, we're doing the, um, the uh, Hanover East pump station, which is down in an easement, which isn't really that visible. It's behind houses. Uh, separate and apart from that, um, those are all being done by the consultant. We're working with the consultant collaboratively doing um, the uh, farm walk pump station. So that so we're doing part of it, they're doing part of it, and we just got some initial drawings on that. So it's probably about on the same track that, um, you know, either toward the end of that one, maybe a little sooner. Uh, but, you know, they should all be underway during uh, 2025. So Dan, for, for the public, explain the pump station and the uh, and the need for it. Well, we always we always like gravity. Gravity is best, but sometimes it's not an option because of the topography. Um, so uh, they have a useful life to them. The equipment, you know, some of them are actually fairly old. The uh, uh, the one at the, the Mohansic pump station goes back to the '60s, so that hasn't had a major overhaul since then. Now the ones are a little newer, like Hanover East goes back uh, probably like late uh, late eighties. Um, so these are all uh, uh, you know uh, varying in age, but they all need some attention. What's so, the, I'm sorry. Well, they're forty to fifty years old, but I don't know if everyone understands gravity and pump. We're talking about sewer, uh, so if you could just expand on that a little bit. Well, ideally, you know, from when the sewage leaves somebody's home, goes into the pipes in the street, it, a good section, a good portion of our system actually makes it to the plant without any mechanical intervention. But because of where some areas are, and I guess uh, Mohansic's probably a good example, because you ride on 202, you realize the pump station sits in a dip in the road. So it's obviously a low point. So. Uh, originally, that was built by um, by IBM when IBM was on Strang Boulevard, and other you know areas came into it. But that was that was a low point, so that pumps up uh, toward 132 um, because it was just necessary, you know. And and what'll I mean? It, you know, let's put it this way: you can eliminate pump stations if going deep wasn't an issue. You know, if you could go dig a trench 30 feet deep, you could avoid it, but the, the cost of going down to that depth is... Too much. Too much, yeah. Okay. What's the useful life on a, on a pump station? You said they have a useful life. What is that approximately? Well, you, you know what, I, you know... The, 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 I mean, I know what comes wear and tear and... But there's know. different components to it. You know, the pumps were constantly changing. We probably get, you know, either for, over the course of four or five years, you're either rebuilding or completely replacing a pump. Um, controls, we periodically update as technology changes. Our telemetry systems change over the years. So it, you know, it isn't like one thing that, you know, that you take the old one, put a new one in, you know. In, in some cases, we have done that in, in our first phase. We actually did that with some of the modular stations that were installed as, uh, one on um, Douglas Drive, and there's another one on uh, Juniper Drive. Uh, but in some cases, that's not necessary. Those those stations needed to be completely uh, redone. <coughs> in the case, you know, the good example would be in this round, the um, 
the uh, pump station at um, Saddle Ridge is there's nothing worth saving. It's a small building that's fallen apart, and you know we, that one will completely redo everything. New building, new, but all of them are going to get new pumps, new controls. You know they'll they'll be updated to current standards. Dan, how how many years do you get before you even start maintenance? You know what I mean? Like, do you, do you do you get like on a new minutes. pump? Do you get like, like a you know five years, and then it could be a you know different parts of the pump. Well, uh, obviously the the meat of the operation is the pumps. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's you know, and it's as you can imagine, it's a bit of a hostile environment dipping any type of uh, electromechanical machinery into a yeah. pit full of sewage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 a fairly hostile place to to have. Um, these pumps, but you know, some manufacturers we've we've had better luck, um, but we're you know frequently rebuilding pumps. Like they don't they don't always you know they, they get to a point though the certain parts begin to wear, and it becomes imp you know the cost of repairing them exceeds you know it becomes a business decision. Don't yeah. don't waste your Might time. Well just, just replace it. Just replace the damn thing. And, and what out. happens if uh, one of our stations fail? If one of our stations uh, fails, that's a bad thing because sewage is coming out, and we have a high degree of uh, liability once that happens. We're in a, within a public water supply, so we need to be stay on top of these things operating because you know sewage spill is a big deal. I mean, there was one one in the news not too long ago uh, that one of the county plants there on the current river let loose, and uh, it was, was quite over a mess. A million gallons, wasn't it? I don't know what the, the total tally was, but that that pump station covers a lot of ground, so there's a big area goes to it. So, yep. so Dan, I do want to tell you that today I had a, a chat with the supervisor, and it it it's like apples and oranges. Yet it goes together in the same fruit basket. We were talking about the potentials of these resewers that are going to come in in the future, and then also maintaining the plants and how it's kind of a give and take the entire way. And I think the mission here is to constantly stay as vigilant as you are in talking to the people at the third plant so both of them grow simultaneous. I understand we can't like, you know, decide what happens. A lot of the things are unforeseen, but I think preparing ourselves as we do want to move forward with other sewer districts and whatnot, that we are also supporting the plants because it would be terrible if we put in a sewer and then it doesn't have a holding pit. So I just, you know, it's kind of like my kids' bikes need the air and the tires. I feel like when we had the conversation, it was like, I think we're on board with you and like just supporting that they both get a double check, a triple check. And yeah, I mean, the, the pump stations, you know, have a, you know, they, they, they are, you know, they're not that complicated, but the plant's a whole nother deal. Yeah, There's exactly. There's a lot going on there and a lot of... But I think people forget that it's not just the pump station. There is a plant that supports the pump station. So, and I just want to let you know that, you know, as a board, like we've talked about it through so that each... And we're always of, giving tours. Come on down. Yeah, it's really, really uh, <laughs> smelly. <laughs> Sounds exciting. <clears throat> All right. And then, so let's, let's get, um, let's get a little bit into the Halix Mills sewer district and what sure. we're trying to achieve there. So I think the, the best way to sort of go into it is just, you know, a brief history of how we got to where we are and, and looking forward what we plan to do. Um, so at the time, there was a number of reports done by our prior consultant, GHD, and uh, at that time they put together a report um, where they look at, looked at the unsewered areas. You know, there was sort of no, I guess, really financial constraints. You know, just cast a wide net, what would make sense, what, sh what should be be trying to connect to our system. And at that time, they looked, it, it was about 670 homes that came out of this report that came out in, um, in uh, 2018. Um, so they, you know, they worked up some numbers, but what became obvious was the, the bottom line, the price that, the, you know, that when, once you do this, if you're establishing a special district, people are gonna see a tax increase and the process requires that we um, do what's called a map plan and report where we, we, we describe uh, you know, how we're gonna do it, where the pipes, the pumps, the whole configuration of the system, what's the, the cost of it, and ultimately what's the, um, 
the, the tax increase that residents in that district will realize if it goes forward. Yeah. Um, so what ended up happening was we did get a commitment, I suppose really more verbally from the, uh, the East of Hudson Fund, mm -hmm. where Westchester County manages for the $10 million. So, so we got that. So when the original map plan and report was done, and the representations we made to folks as to uh, what it, what the whole package was going to be, we were down to like we were, weren't at six seventy anymore. We were like three hundred fifteen parcels, and the three hundred fifteen parcels were coming in at fourteen point three million dollars. So that was basically the deal on the table, and and roughly that worked out to about a tax increase of about seven hundred ninety dollars per household per year. So that's. The people who signed the petition, that's what was represented to them and what they signed on the dotted line with the belief that that was the deal they were going to get. Um, subsequent to that, there was a whole other issue that the county raised, and, and that had to do with some of our areas were going to be require individual pumps for the homes. So that was like another wrinkle that got thrown in, but then, um, you know, the, 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 the other part of what happened was that we, the, our former Congressman Mondaire Jones got us a, a grant, um, a congressional grant for 1.2 million. So we were still sort of in the same ballpark. One of the things we, we didn't have was we, to, to go, when you file with the state controller's office to establish a special district, you have to lay out if, if you're relying on money coming from someplace else, that you have to have a firm commitment. So we never had that firm commitment from the county that we needed to go to the state controller's office. So once we, we got that, we went through all the hearings, because this, the process, the signatures all came in at the end of 2019, and it really wasn't until 2022 that we tried to establish the district. So fast forward, we get the whole package together, goes up to Albany, they review it, and one of the questions they ask is, you know, are these construction cost estimates still valid? <laughs> Which it's a good question. was, was a, well, and a good point, because th the, these construction costs really evolved from- Prior to 2019. Well, the, two, the 2018 report, right? right? So, oh. so now, you know, we're in 2022, so they raised that issue really not something you could just fix. And uh, you know, it was through the whole COVID period, construction costs escalated, so we couldn't dance around that. And we also had a problem we, with how the method of assessment was described, which was another thing we couldn't retroactively fix. It was, it was an issue with the process, so really the process had to start all over again. So where we are now is with the process restarting, let's go back to where we started from. Let's go back to the 670, take a fresh look at it, mm -hmm. and see what we can achieve in terms of funding. So there's two pots of money we're, we're working on. One is through Congressman Lawler's office. Yes. So we've been working with Mike trying to get some more congressional money. And separate and apart from that, we, we applied for the uh, the grant program that EFC manages, the, the Water Quality Improvement Grant Program. So neither one of those, we don't, we don't have a firm commitment yet. But I would say that that's something we should know probably before the end of the year. Yeah, I agree. So once we know how, many, how much grant money we have in place, I guess, you know, essentially I got to reverse engineer it. It's like, this is how much grant money I got. Mm -hmm. This is how much congressional money I have. Uh, you know, this is, this, so this is how much money we have to raise by taxes, but the money we have to raise by taxes is going to be a function of how many homes are in there, how many f feet of pipe do we put in, how many pumps are we, you know, the whole, the whole deal. So, it's, so once we know that answer, then what we can do is you know we, we want to keep the tax rate comparable to what was represented represented to people who supported it the first go around, you know even though costs have gone up we want to hold it. not you know surprise them with a bigger number, but we'd like to try and keep it in that ballpark and hopefully expand the number of properties we can benefit. Uh, 
The other thing I w would recommend we do, last time around we did it by petition, and it takes some time to get people to sign on. We already know we've got, you know, I'm sure some of the people have changed, but this go around, my recommendation, we would do it on the, t instead of trying to get petitions from everybody, that we would do it on the, the town board's motion. That we believe we have a fair deal, we do it on the town board's motion. The downside to that, it, it, it is subject to permissive referendum if enough people object to it. But, you know, but that's, we're not at that fork in the road yet. We gotta figure out how much, how much grant money we have, try to put together what we think the best could deal we, is for everybody. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but could we possibly do it on the board's merit and then also have petitions moving along, getting signed in the meantime, in the event that- We, w we would have meetings within the neighborhood beforehand just to-, to Yeah, judge. that's we, what I would we, think. Don't, don't leave it to a- you know, to, to shooting blind. You want to really... Yeah, because the zones know it. You right. know, yeah. And I, I, had a, I had a conversation with uh, Eileen Burke today, and, uh, we, you know, we <coughs> spoke about a lot of this stuff. And, you know, the shame of it is we had, uh, for so many years, we could not expand our sewers. It wasn't until uh, Michael Grace came into office and looked at the doing the, uh, the flow recording differently. The, and they the rolling accepted, average. Right, mm -hmm. the rolling average. And they lifted the moratorium on our sewers, which was... Yeah, that was 14? 16. 16? Thank you, Susan. So 2016, they were able to lift that moratorium, uh, but even the delay, as we see from 2018 to 2022, the job almost doubled. It went from 14 to 24. And, um, you know, the I think the, the main focus here right now is to say what can we do about getting what we can now when we get the grant money for this year, and uh, and I will say I don't want to I don't want to jinx myself. I'm not wood. We are we are farther along in mm -hmm. in one of the grant processes than we've ever been, uh, and uh, with the congressional grant. So that's looking extremely well as of my conversation on Sunday. But it still has a lot to go, and we'll we'll have to make some noise so our representatives know that we'd like to get this through mm -hmm. and the importance of it. But uh, but I think the, as Dan was saying, once we know what we have in the pot, what we would need to bond and how much we can afford to bond, we could look at the housing that, that could be included and go back to phases of this because it's going to be, I would have to say a job, even if we started it to do all at once, would probably take four to eight years, correct? No, they, you don't have to put it out on one contract. No, no, I know. But, but I, I mean, but you I mean, overall, 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 overall from but totality. Yeah, yeah. But to complete it all over forty eight years is yeah. a, is a lot better to right. just keep the momentum going. No, well, if we could, so if we could break it into phases, God bless. That's and which, that's which ultimately, I mean, the way it worked out with the the original six hundred and seventy homes from the original report that came in a little over forty million dollars. So we had our consultants EDR as part of this recent grant application we did revisit that because we figured why mess around? Let's go for what we really need and right. see what we can see what get, we get funded. Yeah. So so now it was a little over fifty million. So that's so that's the increase is not as great as we're sent. I mean, I, I generally a lot of these grants through EFC usually come in at the twenty five percent level, but it's twenty five percent cent of um, what you actually spend. So, I mean, if, if the, we have to shrink the, you know, the 25% still may not get us to everybody, but at least if we, we know we're eligible for the grant. But then, you know, but to, to your point, it, it ends up being we're going to do what we can based upon the funding we have in place right now. We still have our, essentially our master plan of the 670 parcels so whoever doesn't make it in that round, we could be looking at another set, uh, special district down the line. And again, repeat the process, reach out to our uh, elected representatives, go back to EFC, see where we, you know, shake the tree, see where we can get money from, and put together a whole nother deal <coughs> for the, the remaining properties. And, and hopefully we can uh, get them in as well. So Dan, if we, um, if all goes well, right? And you get th and whatever happens happens, and this is the amount of money, and you have the construction numbers, right? Because that was what tossed you back out. Was oh hey, that was four years ago. 
when you have their written commitment, if the pipe is $2, then the pipe is $2, whether you put it in in four years or eight years, this is the contract that you have with them? Or is it, we have this money that comes in, follow me, and we're doing one district, but there's, let's say there's three districts that we're working on in this pot, right? You said the total areas. Does it change for the third district that gets done in eight years, the construction, or just because it's a written, it's saying this is the money, it goes to this, this is, is the tax, is it locked? Because like, it, it, you know. it, it is, because if you. No, if that's, no, it is, that's all I want yeah, to know. No, I could, because I that's, that's, sure the, that we have to do this that's the, that's the deal. Five we houses. Made, that's the deal we made with those, that group of people. It's a special district, so it, that whole fund can only be associated with that cast of characters. So it's interesting, so, I guess. So it I'm isn't like if we got money left over, we can put it somewhere else. We're not, we're not going to have money left over. Every, it's, no, that's, it's, it's, yeah. We're going to, you know, we might. You know. I just want to make sure that when we play with those cast of characters, whether it's tomorrow that their birthday party comes or in a year from now the birthday party comes, <laughs> the cake is still the same. Like, it doesn't change the numbers. Well, they're not, uh, but the it thing is, the numbers are going to change. For the, for, the, for the second phase, it's not going to change the first phase. The first phase will lock, no, because I'm finding that because we didn't lock in on so many things, like, because of the time. I, I mean, but you, ca you can't. I mean, obviously, we're at the mercy of putting the thing out to bid and where the numbers come in. Right. So, I mean, the first phase, you know, it makes sense. You know, you put a little contingency in there, you get it going. But we're looking at the second phase, you know, trying to find money. It's not going to happen overnight. Night. So there may be a couple of years between knowing that we've got the funding in place to make phase two or three, whatever, yeah. a reality. Um, and then we would structure, an, you know, a new package and a, a new map plan and report to represent what we can do with whatever funding's made available. You know, I, the, 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 the used to be, like in the, the original, a lot of the town sewers were built in two ways. One of them, the majority of them were done, in, including the original plant, was done on what's called the Construction Grants Program, which ran out in the 80s. Under that program, um, the feds funded 75% of the cost, and the state gave us 12 and a half cents. Wow. So the, the town was only on the hook for 12 and a half cents on the dollar. Mm. That ain't the deal anymore. No. And, and the bottom line is, without any money from someplace else, the numbers will just never work. Yeah, I they, just, they just don't work. You know, in a, in a suburban setting with half acre zoning, the amount of pipe you have to put in, you know, it'd be a different thing if we had you know, apartment buildings, you know, and close together, you don't have to put in as much pipe. Right. We got to put in a lot of pipe to serve people. So it's, you know, it's just the, the calculus of how many feet of pipe you have to put in to serve, you know, two houses. You know, if you're a half acre zone, you, you, at a minimum, you got 100 feet of frontage. So with a little luck, 100 feet of pipe buys you two people. Yeah. You know, that's sort of the reality of... Uh, you got to put a lot of pipe in. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Right. Any other questions? No. Uh, thank you for explaining it, Dan. No Thanks, problem. Dan. While you were talking, I did have an idea. I'll uh, touch base with you tomorrow morning about uh, some of the people that may be able to help us in achieving grants and at least giving us letters of support. Okay. So. It's all about we got to shake that tree because without money from outside sources, it just ain't going to work. No, I agree. Um, Thanks, Dan. Great. Thank you so All much, right. Dan. You're welcome. Good night, guys. Good night. Uh, Thank you. You know, I, I think uh, I think one of the things that, that I want to make sure is stressed is that we are not going to let go of the tail here. We're going to keep keep grabbing, keep, keep trying to move this forward. Uh, we're going to try to think outside the box as much as possible to get it done. And... Uh, you know, as, as I said with the, uh, in the earlier conversation, is that the more we wait, the more those costs go yeah. up. So I really, really would like to see shovels in the ground, get something locked in, because once we bid it, it's locked in, and then we could worry about then that. Then we go to the next one, yeah. Right. So. Um, I just wanted to make sure it was locked in. <laughs> oh, that's right. Your neighborhood would probably benefit yes, from this. Yes, and also, but even if it wasn't for my neighborhood, I, my neighbors have been waiting for a really long time, and I, I feel like that lock-in is like the seal. Even if they have to wait after the lock-in, it just feels better than this thing of, like, we're waiting, and then it, there's, it didn't feel like a veil. Uh, yeah, and 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 stuff look, happens, but. Right, look, and, and, you know, septic systems fail. 
They're horrible. Just They're <laughs> horrible for the environment. Um, and and we need to we need to really uh, try to try to get this uh, get as much of our town sewered as possible. I think. And uh, unfortunately, you know, years years down the road or or years past, it would have been a lot cheaper. But well, you know, I mean, I do want to again thank you for today because with my pool business experience, it's like follow the pipe and how much pipe you need. And that's what brought me all the way to the filter, which is obviously the plants, like through the palm station. And I just feel like we have a, we have a really good look at all of it as opposed to just focusing. So while we shake, we're shaking for the entire thing, like even for backup for the plant, because what's the point of getting the green light for me personally for the bids and then the plant can't hold or yeah. So. Well, our plant was built with a capacity of 2.5 million gallons per day. Uh, we are currently capped by DEC at 1.5 million gallons per day on a 12-month rolling average. Uh, we actually did have, uh, with the extremely heavy rains, we had, uh, we had, we had, ra we have rainwater that's getting into the system yeah. somehow. Uh, we've been doing some INI studies, but mainly for peak skill that we were that we were. Uh, uh, mandated to do for the Peekskill Sewer District, which part the the uh, west side of our town is in. So they've been, you know, they've been looking at that. But uh, I believe Dan's people have been out and about looking through some of our pipe on this side, uh, doing some inspections with the cameras that we have. Uh, I haven't heard of any smoke testing going on lately, Dan. So I'd like, I would like to see that because sometimes people will tie their not realize it, uh, or if someone's being slick, they'll tie their rainwater spouts into piping underground and run it into, instead of the stormwater pipes, they'll run it into the sewer pipes. And you can see that through a uh, smoke test. You'll see smoke, you put smoke through the sewer, mm -hmm. and if it's coming out through someone's uh, rain spouts, you know that it's tied in improperly, and you're able to do something about that. So, uh, but our, our, our goal or you know should be in that area what can we do to uh, to limit the infiltration of storm water yeah and support our sewer department right so well, that they can do their well job not, th not that but make sure we don't go over on our average but yeah because that, that just skews our numbers yeah and and with the, with the heavy rains that we had le at the end of last year July throughout um, you know it was there but uh, <coughs> the numbers are back in line and we'll keep moving forward and we are trying to get a uh, uh, an additional part of uh, that 2.5 or that remaining million gallons per day uh, allocated for use. So, all right. So, um, from the finance department, we're going to authorize a controller uh, to a um, a budget uh, transfer for payment to the to Barton and LeJudis DPC to complete the watershed inventory. Um, <coughs> from the legal department, authorize the town supervisor to enter into an agreement with uh, Fifth Asset Inc. DBA debt book. Uh, authorize the town controller to process payments to. Leakley Platt, Diamond McCarthy, and Sloan Slarkin, uh, as enumerated in the uh, agenda, authorize the town controller to process a budget transfer for the Lake Mohegan Improvement District. Mm -hmm. um, authorize Parks and Recreation to auction unused equipment. Uh, we have the pallet machine parts, uh, snow cone machine. Ooh, <coughs> Jimmy, I might, I might want to buy that snow cone machine. <laughs> a speaker, paint, uh, an enclosed trailer, and a PA system. And we uh, want to authorize the town supervisor to execute any documents related for New York State DEC WQIP grant application. Um, and that is uh, for the uh, for the Lake Mohegan catch basin filtration, uh, for to keep the um, uh, keep us on track with our MS4 uh, and keeping the phosphorus out of the uh, the water system, and um, one that we're going to read in uh, resolved that the town clerk is authorized to advertise a bid for the collection and disposable 
of disposal of residential refuse and recyclable materials in the town of Yorktown. Uh, we do have a current bid that went out. Uh, we are going to uh, submit, a, uh, submit proposals or, or solicit proposals for a new bid with a different time frame to see if that uh, affects the pricing. Uh, we want to get the best deal for our residents. So we will uh, have that out there, and um, that is it for that. Can I have a motion? Motion. Second? Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, and finally, uh, motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Yorktown. Good night, Yorktown.